What up, ladies and germs, and the movie I am reviewing tonight is The Descent. It is a 2005 British horror thriller written and directed by English filmmaker Neil Marshall, who also had directed the other 2002 British werewolf horror flick, Dog Soldiers, which holds a special place in our hearts. And thanks to that, it has gained a loving cult following. We'll get to the cult following. We'll get to that movie sometime in the near future. But anyway, The Descent is Marshall's second directorial job, after Dog Soldiers, and these two movies have proven that he is a well-crafted director who has a very clear vision on how to make his movies, and I believe he deserves a lot more respect here in America. The movie follows six women who are best friends, and once every year, they go out on a daring adventure to enjoy their free time. One of them, named Sarah, played by Shauna McDonald, ends up in a car accident that kills her husband and young daughter, but only Sarah survives. This leaves her dramatized and depressed. One year later, and she is still going through a rough time getting over the crash, but she decides to go along with her friends, all named Juno, Beth, Rebecca, Sam, and Holly, on another annual odyssey, this time spelunking, or cave diving, into a cave system in the La Appalachian Mountains somewhere in the United States. They all believe they're going through a cave that has already been discovered and is a tourist place, based on what Juno, the ringleader, claims. Beginning their descent into the cave, there is no more light, except for whatever light source is coming from their flashlights or the headlights on their helmets, or the light torches or the glow sticks. But suddenly, their only way back out of the cave is blocked out by a cave-in, thus leaving them trapped. Juno reveals that the cave they're in has never been discovered, so nobody knows that they're down there. So now the only way out they, only way they can get out is if they go deeper into the cave, and hopefully find another way out. But as their tra travels will lead them deeper into the cave, they realize that they are not alone in those caves, and this pits them in a bloody battle for survival. After the, demo after the moderate success of Dog Soldiers, Neil Marshall was, started, was starting to get multiple scripts for horror movies from Ho Hollywood with the opportunity to direct. However, he turned them all down out of fear of being typecast as a horror film director, but he eventually decided to make his own horror film, which became The Descent, reasoning, they are very different movies. He had originally planned to, planned to get the main cast to be both male and female, but his business partner realized that, that horror films almost never have all-female casts. Defying convention, Marshall decided to cast all women in the roles and avoided making them cliched. It is said that each fair female character is from a different part of Europe or Scotland. Marshall gave them different accounts to enable different accents to enable us, the audience, to tell the difference between the women and to establish a more cosmopolitan feel than the British marketing of dog soldiers. Personally, I think it's cool that it goes with an all-female cast, kind of like how John Carpenter's 1982 sci-fi horror timeless classic, The Thing, which had an all-male cast in it. Not one woman in it. The film was originally titled The Dark, in reference to the pitch black settings in the caves, but for whatever reason, it was changed. But I do like The Descent. It's an ominous title, and it describes the character's journey like a descent into hell. So Marshall cited the, uh, cited the old 1970s and 80s films, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Thing, and Deliverance as primary influences in establishing, te establishing tension in this film. I honestly think it works really well in this movie. The movie's themes of complete isolation, claustrophobia, and slow-burning tension gives you this skin-crawling, spine-tingling feel throughout the movie that just leaves you spooked out of your wits when the fright scare finally happens. Those three themes are obviously influenced by a lot of other movies that it reminds me of such as Alien, which is a 1979 sci-fi horror film directed by Ridley Scott. The big differences are that the, are that the monster in this movie, Alien, is an extremely hostile alien, 
and it's set entirely on board a spacecraft in the ass end of outer space, and primarily primarily features seven gender diverse characters, five five men, two women. The other movie is also the other movie is also the thing, which is set in an Anta Antarctic research outpost and features twelve male characters. And even though it's set in a place they can walk in and out of, but it's in the dead ass winter se season. So the severe snowstorms so isolate them in their outpost. Another movie is Deliverance, which features a group of best friends going out on a camping adventure and instead finds pure terror preying upon them. The villains of the movie, called the Cr Crawlers, are actually influenced by the main character and villain, Count Orlok, in the 1922 silent horror film Nosferatu whose appearance became the influences for the crawler's appearance in this film. I think they look terrifyingly creepy in this movie, and they almost look like demonic vampires. Makes my skin crawl. What's funny is that the lead crawler, named Scar, is played by actor John Gray Craig Conway, who is also in Neil, Ar Neil Marshall's next film, 2008, the 2008 action film Doomsday, where he plays antagonist Sol Saul, leader of the punk-like cannibals. You gotta see him in that movie. He's just hilarious in it. How can you not love that guy? I mean, just look at that guy in that movie, in that one scene where he's on that stage. Best introduction ever. And he's just... The film was released on July 8th of 2005 in the United Kingdom and August 4th of 2006 in the United States. The film's budget was 3.5 million pounds and it grossed over 57 million dollars worldwide. The London terrorist bombings on July 7th reportedly affected the film's box office performances because people were just becoming affected by the idea of being trapped underground. One critic even called it the best horror thriller since Alien. Overall, the film was a critic's a critical success, as it holds an 85% certified fresh overall approval rating on Rotten, the website Rotten Tomatoes. And legendary film critic gave the film 4 out of 4 stars, calling it the fresh, exciting summer movie I've been wanting for months. Or for years, it seems. The movie was praised for its claustrophobic tension build, as it was something horror films rarely use nowadays. The production design on the caves, done by Simon Falls, was also given appraisal, as they weren't r even real caves, but fake ones. Even at some points, they used the same cave wall in another different location than the characters were in, like when the characters entered the cave through the pit, the wall behind them, it, Notice the wall behind them. Then, when they're inside the cave in the big room, when the when Juno throws the flare down, the cave right beside them is the same cave which the wall in which they enter, but sideways, tilted that way. It's cool. The movie was even given a 7.5 out of 10 stars on IMDb.com. It, re it was released at, at around the same time as two suspiciously similar films were being released thus inadvertently causing a dick measuring contest which didn't work out very well. The first one being The Cave, whose budget was 13, 30 million dollars and was released on August 26th of 2005, which, is, which received a, a mixed to negative reception for its CGI effects, unrelatable characters, not so scary mo moments, etc. It holds a 5.0 out of 10 rating on IMDb. The other film was The Cavern, whose budget was $150,000 and was released on October 30, 2006. Its original title was uh, Within, but it was changed to cash in on the success of The Cave and The Descent. I'm not sure what the box office gross was, but it holds a 2.9 out of 10 rating on IMDb, meaning it must have sucked. Uh, and, uh, the Descent is widely considered the best out of the three films, uh, and that that proves why. One issue that was raised at the time was the different endings in both the UK and US releases. So, spoiler alert! In the UK ending, 
which is the original ending. Protagonist Sarah makes it out of the cave alive and drives off in her awaiting jeep. But then after pulling over, she sees what may be a dead ghost of Juno right beside in her, scaring her. Then she wakes up back in the cave, still trapped there. But silently, she sees her young da daughter, alive, with a lit birthday cake in between them. Sarah smiles, flooded with solace. We realize what she is actually looking at is nothing. The light source revealed to be her fire torch, thus showing us that she is having a hallucination. And we pan away as the crawler's shrieking noise get louder, and then end credits. The U.S. release cut uh, of that uh, the U.S. release uh, deleted that ending, instead ending with Sarah in the jeep getting freaked out by Juno's ghost, and then cut to black. The reason for the cut is that American audiences found the original ending uber hopeless and too depressing, which is fine to me. Even I find the ending a bit too, too depressing to me. But honestly, it works, because it brings Sarah's story, story arc, in a way, to a closure, even though she's still buried alive in this cave uh, with these creatures hunting her down. But she's found her long lost solace. I've heard a rumored, spe rumored speculation that Sarah actually died in the car crash, and her journey into the cave is her supposed limbo-like afterlife, and the cave is her own kind of hell, and the crawlers are demons she has to fight through to meet with her daughter. That's a nice rumor. Even I can, can, can agree with that, too. Marshall compared the change to the ending of the tech... Uh, com Marshall compared the change of the ending to the ending of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, saying, just because she gets away, does that make it a happy ending? The sci-fi channel in our country, the U.S., only shows the U.S. ending, but the original ending is broadcast only in channels in other certain countries, such as Latin America or Canada. But you can find the original ending on the unrated DVD ending of the movie, DVD edition, on the unrated DVD edition, which you can be able to find in whatever store you go to, such as a Walmart or Barnes & Noble store, or you can order it for it on Amazon.com on your computer or laptop, with a good bargain price that's worth it. In my honest opinion, it's a really solid, claustrophobic, scary movie. I love its sense of tension, and it doesn't jump immediately into the creature terror scenes but instead slowly builds right up into it as the cave ends up becoming a frightening character. I love how it reminds me of Alien and The Thing, both of which are my most favorite monster horror movies. I really like this movie. It's really scary. I would definitely recommend it to whoever is watching this. Go, go see it if you want to see spend your date night with your pretty girlfriend watching a scary movie that feels claustrophobic. It will definitely make your girlfriend become spooked out and want, and want you to hold her for the whole movie. Trust me. So thank you for watching this, and I hope you enjoyed this review. So, till next time, peace!